episode of Sports Talk with your boy Bones Hansino. Good old Grizz Adams. We're in here. We had a, a fairly crazy week in sports. We've been kind of slacking on our talk, so we got a lot to catch up on. Kind of going to focus on the on the recent shit. The uh, big headlines. Everybody loved the blind side. I was the biggest Michael Orr fan because I was so <laughs> happy when he went to the Ravens. You know, it was such a great story. Just robbed Michael Orr of everything. Never even adopted him. Just did it as a, a conservative ship. Is that what it is? I'm glad that we get both sides because he's a good old Ravens fan and I would have just been. Oh, The Blind Side was a cute movie. It's based on a true story type shit. Well, that shit's been dominating. Like, they won't even, they haven't even responded yet. I don't think you really can when you dig yourself. Dig but I mean, they're in a lawsuit at this. Gotta say something, right? Or are you just pleading the fifth the whole time? Until you get to court. I would they, I would say they don't say anything until they get to court or they get proven guilty. Don't you think it would be easier just to come out and be like, oh, we always been to it. Like, or to try to address it before than just wait the whole time. Like, people are stewing on this shit. People are mad about it. Nah, because I think they just be digging themselves a deep hole. There's no really way to justify seeing a, an opportunity out of a, a struggling young kid to play football. You know it's crazy. And to benefit off of that young man. Because the, the movie, Michael Lurie even went on record saying there was a lot of fabrications wasn't true to this. But the fact that they actually investigated it for the exact reason that they were doing and then failed it, what does that say to the NCAA? Well, because the two really reaped all that benefit. Everything that they described in the movies, them motherfuckers really did. And it depends on how deep we want to go, but like that's been happening for a while. Not the adoption part, but like all of that money shit. We that's can true. go back with like Reggie Bush. Remember Terrell Pryor got in trouble for selling his autographs. Yeah, I mean, that these kids, that's the only way they used to make money back in the day. Yeah, so that's that's why I know. think it's fucked up too. Like we've even been on this. Like now that they actually are getting paid, they can do the NIL deals. They can get the they started with the food plans, which I thought they should have had from the jump, but like yeah. How, how do you go back and tell Reggie that he can't have a Heisman because he wasn't getting paid? He didn't make shit. Like, yeah. yeah, he made money to go to the school. They paid him to go there. But, like, if they didn't do that, he would have been right there, broke as fuck. Just like, who was it, Shabazz Napier? When he was talking about, oh, oh there, was, there was weeks where I didn't eat. Uh-huh. And, like, working out that much and doing all that shit, like, for a school, like, I think that's crazy. Like how long for the NIL, NAL deal to come around? That's that. It just started what, two years ago? They've been making money off of college for a long ass time. Yeah, because they would even sell jerseys like football or basketball. They just yeah. want to put the name on the back. My, my dumb ass would buy Ohio State jerseys all the time. I guess there's a legal precedent. My dad's actually very informed. He was the one it's that came very... to me and was telling me all this shit. <laughs> he was like, did you hear about the blind side family? Yeah, actually. Shout Tell me more. Pops. Shout out, Pops. Um, I guarantee it. He has to. One of these days, he has to. Yeah, he wouldn't. He'd come in here and talk about the Broncos and tell us how, how shitty they're. Yeah. He's so mad oh, about yeah, the Brandon, Broncos fuck still. you. So mad. Bitch. We started a fantasy league, by the way. But we were talking to him. We were, we were talking about making it a tattoo league. And yeah. <laughs> I, told him, I told him I was going to get a Raven tattooed on him. Because, I mean, he likes the Ravens, but like he's a Broncos fan, die hard. This guy chimes in, nope, you're going to get the shield. I'm a Raiders fan, Almost man. Almost made this man quit the fantasy league. <laughs> <laughs> but so you got to get a Raiders logo. I'm, I'm telling you, one of these days, if he gets last place and you get a Raiders shield on him, I think he'd rather die before that. Yeah, I don't think that ever happened. But, like, vice versa, right? Like, let's say I like get last place, get a and he's like, on no, you. no, Brandon. You said you're going to, ah, damn, like, no. If he did, like, the old school D with the, with the horse, but he had the dick sticking out. Okay, so, like. With this tattoo league, how big of a tattoo is the rule? Are we going massive? I'm saying like... Yeah, I'm okay with that. Like half half dollar size. Maybe yeah. a little bit bigger than that. Yeah. And nothing, like you could get it at the Friday the 13th, $13 tattoos. Uh, that's about the size that I'm thinking. Probably can't even see it because it's so... It seems respectable well, and then it's not going to be crazy. Oh, I like that. But yeah, I still would... I would I would remember the old school World Star video that dude sanding off his tattoo. That would be me if I got a fucking a Broncos tattoo. No, I do because if I if you made me get a Steelers, like if you got the three emblem, like the Steve, diamonds on me, and I got enough love, y'all, to never make y'all never make y'all do that. I would I don't never know, make you do. That. I don't know what tattoo I would like. 
I would have to be like, oh yeah, here you like I just, I don't want to fuck. I don't know about the tattoo league. I do. I know we just gotta have some class, some grace, and you know, I'm gonna that. handle it with taste. I want it to. It's on you forever. Tattoo leagues where you just want to fuck your homies over. That's that's just dick it's shit. It's pretty right funny there. though. You shouldn't get shit. last place. Well, either that or we just do a punishment league. Like you get a no, week I want of. A, I want a tattoo league. I want a tattoo league. Who's I think that's for the tattoos. Well, I don't know. We could take it out of pool. Losers shouldn't have to get. Have we could take it out of pool. Tattoos. We could take it out of. Um, if we once we have a pool, Wait, we could take it. Eleven out. people have to yeah. throw in an extra five dollars for at the end of the year. I'm I'm not mad. I'm not getting last place. Shit, even if I was first place, just you get a stupid ass tattoo, I'd probably pay for it. I don't think you'd ever get first place. Fuck off. Hey, JT, Jonathan Taylor screwed me. Not going to make the mistake of waiting till the 10th round and getting Russell. Goddamn, let's ride. Dude, but this is <laughs> Wilson. Chino Smith, free agent. Right, but I had too much faith. And I had Kirk Cousins on the background, right? So every week I wouldn't play Kirk, he'd ball. So then once free agency got dicey, we got real, real slim. That's when I was like, fuck, I need a quarterback. I don't remember who I got to credit me Derek Carr in hopes of like, oh, Derek Carr's balling out now. And he still got, I, I still got fucked over. It was a running back lie. game. I did. I definitely won that transaction. It was a running back I don't remember game. who I got out of it, but I got like a receiver and a, or a running back out of it. She were heavy on those. I had Tyreek Hill who balled last yeah. year. I had DK Metcalf who was solid. And then I had uh, Amari Cooper. I had like a consistent, Which was a good team. I had a I mean, consistent wide receiver. Your court. quarterbacks just sucked. You had eight points out of them when everybody else is going like 35 40. So, and you know, not to talk about too much fantasy this year, but I think the Raiders are going to be a slept on defense. So I might just, I might just be cool with people having the monitor, you know, that, that, that taste of the Raiders being shitty on defense. And I might just, sneak yeah, but them. you got to think we're doing, we're doing a, uh, dynasty. a dynasty. So you're really going to ride with the Raiders defense for the rest? All of my core is young. Tyree Wilson, we just drafted. Trayvon Moerg, super young. That's Nate true. Hobbs is super young. That's Divine true. Diablo, super young. Max Crosby, he's, been, he's going to be a Raider that, for life. Hey, I'm not, it's not a bad look. I don't disagree with you. I need a solid, solid linebacker. And we would just... I feel like, I feel like my sec, our secondary is going to be... Uh, I'd actually get some picks, fumbles, I mean, lots of sacks. I might actually I've, be... A, this is the thing for me, though. I've heard this for... I mean, it wasn't... It's not every always defense. with the defense. It's every now and then. Like it's, It was it's always at the beginning Chandler of the year. Jones. You're always like, oh, we're going to get a five. We're top five defense. And then even with Richard Seymour, you thought it was going to be big. Was like, there was, there's been a lot of years where I'm like, oh, yeah. Max Crosby, I think, is the best defense player that you guys have had in, in a long time since, like, Charles Woodson. Yeah. Because he's like, I was thinking of players that we drafted, drafted. We had a lot of good players that came to us that we never. But even then, like, they, we drafted were, Max. they were later in their career, too. Like, you're exactly. actually going to see Max. Like, exactly. seeing Max at his prime is going to be scary. Like, he's already a bad motherfucker. So people like, how fools dark. Brady Camps, whatever they do. Practices, great practices. But I love that shit. And Max Crosby fighting Cam Akers. Right. It was a it was a solid uh, ego boost for the defense. Oh, you because know, that's the leader of our defense. Why were they fighting? Oh, Not I remember because he was going in and going sack, sack, and Cam Akers was, didn't like it, and he said, "I I do what I had to do." I like Max Crosby. I like that energy. You know, I like that guy. He I like it too. Did you see Devin Duvernay beat the shit out of that? Command? No, but that's what I was going to ask you. What do we consider about, like, preseason? I like it. I like because it because that fighting shit's fun. It's, I don't think it's as fun for, like, the front office and, like, the... And I think it's fun for the players, too, because, like, but, like, coaches and people don't like it. Media doesn't like it. But I think, like, from our perspective as, like, fans and from the player perspective, it's, hey, we haven't seen this in two, three months. <laughs> You know, so yeah. everything's pent up. It's aggression. It's nice. Like as a fan, I like to see that. I haven't seen aggression in or like no, it's in UFC and shit like that. But like, actually, the NFL's back. You know, and it shows that they care about it. it shows the chippiness of like, okay, maybe my defense is passionate enough to fight about some shit. You know, yeah, like facts. I like that energy. Facts. And it shows, yeah, for real, they're ready to get after it. Like I still, I rewatched the Bullies of Baltimore. 
still need to get on. I still need to watch that. Watch no. okay. Well, because I don't be think a... I have my ESPN Plus on my phone. It's hey, so only on gonna, my PlayStation. We're gonna have to roll that one, and we're gonna. I'm gonna have to show you that. But like that was their mentality. They were ready. Like they wanted to beat the shit out of the offense every week. Like in practice. They were ready, like, and when they came into it, they were ready to beat the shit out of every. Like, that was back in the day, too, when you could go out and hurt people. Like, they didn't care. But, like, I like that mentality, too, because it shows, like, they're out there ready for it. Like, it's preseason, and they're already ready to fight I, for it. Like, I like that. Imagine what it is when it's regular season, what it's playoffs. Like, maybe Josh McDaniels, and I don't want to say he knows what the fuck he's doing. Maybe this year. We'll right. see. Maybe I, it's all right. You never know with Josh McDaniels. I mean,. I know you want to give the man his props, but I, I don't believe in him. I have no expectation. I have no expectation. And I think that's the best way to go into it. I'm kind of sad because I have high expectations. Every like, year. Speaking of defenses, you, I didn't even realize that we signed Jadavian Clowney. And once we I signed Jadavian, that, truth bomb that shit you. made me so happy last night. I can't even tell you how happy I was about that news. That man, like, regardless of if you think he's a bust, if you think he's great if you think whatever you think about the man he's a hard working motherfucker i've seen him twice a year for the last four years have to go after fucking lamar jackson and just like the frustration and like the the battle that goes between them because like you could even see it miles garrett kind of looked in amazement but like jadavian Clowney would be like fuck you like god damn it like he hated it like so to bring that in i think as a raven he's gonna be next level and we haven't had a fucking good edge rusher in how long like, I hope Odafe steps up. Our secondary is looking fantastic. We got Roquan and Pat Queen, which we'll talk about later, but I hope to God he doesn't get traded. I think we're going to be a top five defense. I think our offense is going to be better than our defense. Motherfuckers are saying we're going to miss the playoffs. We won't even. Steelers and the Bengals and they really the Browns the are so deep. Yeah, they think we're going to be a good team, but not good enough because the AFC is so deep. Like hey, Kenny Pickett and George. When I tell you, we're going to have a top three seed. I called it now, just so you know. If Lamar Jackson stays healthy, is a we're a top three seed. I'm gonna be personally biased. I think it's just from the jump. OBJ, we got Zay Flowers, Mark, and JK. Gus is health. Our offensive line is ranked top like three in PFL. From we got the best ranked safety. We got Marlon Humphrey, who arguably is top two three back in the league. Our line got better. Our linebackers, Roquan Smith, is a God. Are we like, getting a health? I'm praying. I'm praying. That's really, and this is the thing. We got Todd Monken. We're not running that same G-Row shit. Like, True. I've been watching training camps and, like, all kinds of practice film and shit like that. Like, we're throwing the ball. Like, you're not going to see, like, this might be the year you don't see Lamar Jackson go over 1,000 yards rushing. You might not see him go over 800 yards rushing. Man's really going to sit here, and he's really going to pick apart defenses. Put the narrative that oh he's a running back he can't throw he can't do this like it's gonna put it all the way that man's gonna go for like four thousand four thousand plus for sure i'm going like 40 touchdowns like he is going to go off this year that defense is gonna hold weight who are y'all playing that's where it gets rough i, I have a prediction who are you thinking i don't want to sound crazy about that. I want to say San Francisco. San Francisco. I would say I can see that. I don't. I think it's either San Francisco or Philadelphia. Or, of course. I'm. I was thinking. And that's the matchup. And I'm gonna get crucified NFC Championship for this. last year, right? Yeah. Well, and then Brock versus, Purdy got hurt in the first oh, fucking drive, and it was. Kind of, their offense is so good that Brock Purdy could step in and just it's fantastic. transition. And they didn't have any quarterback after that. I don't like, think Trey Lance is for them. Yeah, he's gonna be. That's gonna be part of the next segment. He's. He's, I think he's on that track. running with Brock. He's already been announced. But I might get crucified for this. I think it's finally, I think Cowboys might actually. Yikes. Hey, we're back. You didn't see that, though. I apologize. Smoothly transition. You said the Cowboys? That's crazy. I saw I something on the internet know. that was, I saw something on the internet that was going, talking about everybody fighting, right? So it was Raven, Ravens players fighting the command. Uh -huh. Raiders players fighting the, the Rams and Cowboys players fighting Cowboys players because the Cowboys are always a fucking mess. You know? No, I see it. I see it. That was like, that's my outlandish take. I don't think the Eagles are going to repeat. Crucified I don't see them going. I know, I told you I was going to get crucified. That's my <laughs> outlandish. If we see Ravens and Cowboys in the Super Bowl, though, don't say I didn't say it first. That's my outlandish take. If I'm going realistic. 
I just don't want. I don't think the 49ers are going to do it. I think their offense is so this good. This is the thing. You finally got a healthy. Like, I don't think CMC is going to stay healthy. You're really relying on Brock Purdy, and I don't think Brock Purdy is really. You're forgetting about that. They do, but Debo, 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 took, Debo took a hell of a drop as soon as CMC came around. And then he was so hurt all last year. Maybe that's it's, why he took the dip. Which is true, but like he was hurt. Like If he doesn't stay, and even before then, like the year now before, they have weapons he's so injury-prone. Like The 49ers are such an injury-prone team. Like On paper, fantastic, but like, are they going to hold up the whole year? Are they going to, you know, can they make that full run to the Super Bowl? And I don't know if they can. CMC... I believe is hurt every single year. He's what I don't know if he played all the last year. Did he? He played the full year. I that would have I would have to check. I think that. he maybe missed like a game or two, but like other than that, every other year he's missed like been out the rest of the year. And I don't know if that's just because he played for the Panthers and it didn't really matter. Played seventeen games last year. Okay, so yeah, he was actually fully in a in good it. offense you know. that knows how to spread out and take care. I think they actually know. They actually go pretty far. I don't know. Yeah, honestly, the NFC, this is the thing. The AFC is so much more stacked than the NFC. Okay, so like, right now, really honestly, though? if I'm looking at it, I, Carolina's trash. Tampa Bay's trash. Sure, Atlanta's sure, trash. Sure, sure. New Orleans trash. Minnesota wait, trash. Wait, you don't think Derek Carr is going to add no, I don't think an so. immediate answer I don't think for so. the, the Saints? How, how long have you watched him? Uh, they're still, they're 12 still, years, I think? They're still banking on Michael Thomas to come back and be that guy. I don't think he is. I don't think he hasn't played in three years. He's not going to come back in 2019, 2018 form. Not going to happen. I don't see it happening. The a- NFC South is trash. Bryce I, Young is going gonna, gonna, gonna to take his experience to get good at what he does right. with the Panthers. Like The Panthers, I think, are going to win that division. And I don't think they're going to have a winning record. What about a sleeper like Detroit Lions? I could see it, but I don't know. Because I think they're off. Because, like, oh, Minnesota, I, I can't put my full faith in Minnesota. You got rid of Dalvin. Okay. You're running with Jay Jetta, and you're running with Kirk Cousins. That's I agree with Minnesota. Their defense I'm isn't, rule isn't terrible, but they're not great. Rule them out. Fucking Green Bay. Are you going with Jordan Love and, and Green Bay? Matt Absolutely LaFord, not. I'm not either. Chicago. I know, however, I'm I, not, I, Justin I'm Fields not, might. I'm not opposed to. I Justin can see Fields. it with DJ Moore. Oh, no. Yeah, the, not. I would not mind seeing the Ravens Bears either. I, think I can see the Bears as a sleeper. Now, however, I'm not saying Super Bowl level. I'm just saying I, they might have I, a good I think they, they, might get, get I think they could be a sleeper is. team. You said the same thing about the Eagles last year, though. They, they were going to be a sleeper and weren't sure. I said they were going to the Super Bowl last year. I can see it. I can see it. I said the Eagles were going to. I said they were going to win the Super Bowl. Detroit, I can see it too, but I don't really see Detroit doing it because it's Detroit. I don't see it. Matthew, been, City Magic, they've already baby. been they've been trying to shop Matthew Stafford or not Matthew Stafford, fucking Jared Goff, and uh, yeah, because they need a quarterback. Yeah, they, they do not that's, have that. That's the thing that's gonna hold them back. The Rams, trash. Arizona, trash. Yep. San Francisco, like I said, injury prone as fuck. Seattle, I think, is another sleeper team. Seattle might be able to pull some shit out. Dallas, Philly, Giants, and the Commanders. I can see the Giants. I don't think Philly's gonna return. Y'all, he had one History good game repeats. against. And he had one good game against me at Madden, and he. I think the Giants the are gonna ball. Right there. I'm not gonna lie. I think the Giants are gonna ball. The AFC is more questionable with the Ravens. I'm not gonna lie. I, just because you gotta go through the not, Jets, the Chiefs, Sterling the Shepherd Bills. Was open all night last night. I'm just saying. When it's when it's on Kodak in what 18 weeks from now, when they're rolling heavy. Big facts. We'll see. They were a good team last year, and they only got better. But I think the same thing for them. I think so too, but but golf is gonna hold them back. Now, Their well, offensive line still isn't the greatest. They got rid of DeAndre Swift. I told you, I thought the Kansas City. What, if, they, I, what, what if, if I did see y'all making it to the championship? I could see it. I don't. I don't think. I think this is honestly our year. Their defense. I think Chris Jones might be on that trade block too. I believe he is. I don't know if they're going to hold that. That's a big blow to their defense. They already lost a lot on their defense. They lost Juju. I mean, they're running with MVS right now. I think that's their number one receiver. Isn't it? Travis Kelsey's out. Travis number Kelsey's one tight out end there. And but the number one receiver. How long is Joe Burrow supposed I, to be I mean, out? I did see thing. something pop up, pop up that about how long Joe Burrow's supposed to be out. He's, he should be back early. He's not going to lose. Like, Is he going to miss a game against the you? Thing, that would I cool. hope he doesn't. I hope he's <laughs> insulin. They don't have any excuse you know, to they, it. They got you guys in 
put your pants down essentially Tyler Huntley if he did not do bad and in if a, he did not if he would have handed the ball off to JK Dobbins instead of trying to sneak it over the top we won and the Bengals are not going to the Super Bowl Bengals are not doing they lost to a backup quarterback that's rated 68 I mean, like I, I just don't see it I mean and here, bro, the bro. whole Folks. The whole perspective here is if Lamar Jackson's actually going to stay healthy. If Lamar Jackson can stay healthy, then... That's the biggest what if. I mean, seriously, because he's 6-2 six six as a starter against the Bengals. If Lamar Jackson plays against the Bengals, the Bengals lose. Yeah, I like that. Like in the other two, I want to say Big one man. of them, he got yeah. hurt in it, and Tyler had to come in. Snoop had to come in and fill in for him. Like everybody gives Joe Burrow all this credit. The Bengals are not what they are cracked up to be. I'll tell you this now. They're not going to be who they think they are. And then their timetable's already running out because they ain't going to be able to pay T. They ain't going to be able to pay Jamar. Joe Burrow's about to break the fucking market. Like, there's no way that they're going to be able to afford everybody. I agree with you on that. So we already discussed it a few times. We already brought it up. Possible trades. We got a few big ones on here, I think. I've kind of came up with predictions on what I think is going to happen. I don't think it's actually. Okay. So I got, I got the top six, seven. We got Aaron Donald. Aaron Donald has no reason to be in the Rams. He already was contemplating retirement, right? Yep. Like he already won the world championship. Like, if you're going to continue to play, he doesn't want to be on a losing team. Oh, yeah. He's going to want to be out of there. I think that the Philadelphia Eagles, and this, this would change my whole perspective because the Eagles lost so much on defense, right? If they came back and got Aaron Donald to hold down the middle, Fletcher Cox that would be absolutely terrifying so I see I see that as the biggest suitor they need him the most what do they have what would they offer because Aaron Donald will have to be a big pull I mean you know? honestly it wouldn't really Aaron Donald doesn't want to be there he's in the final years of his contract out this year I mean I don't think he's going to sit out this year but he doesn't want to I mean I can see him retiring if he gets stuck with the Rams he that's was already more imagine. in retirement. That's what I foresaw was him so retiring. So, like, if, you, if you're in the Rams and that business perspective, is it, hey, am I going to take absolutely nothing and get Andrew Lucked? Or am I going to trade him off, let him go to a contender, and let him play out his contract? And Yeah, when you get people, retired. And people you, retire because they're like, look, I've been hurt too. Yeah. Then it's just nothing. Like, that, I would do it. Like, if I was the Eagles... Cause then didn't they? They even who was a uh, dude from Georgia? Oh, which one? Jalen Carter? Is that it? Big homie in the defensive tackle. Oh, yeah, yeah. Even yeah. if you sat there and had Aaron Donald mentor him, that's what I was at for. That shit would be insane. Got Nolan Smith. Facts. Like, and then just there to mentor those rookies, like those young guys, like oh. that shit would be crazy. Um, we got Jonathan Taylor. I don't think Jonathan Taylor's playing for the Colts. Uh, you know, I am. I'll put that aside. Where would where? See, you can't be mad at Jonathan Taylor. You got to be yeah, mad at the system. Right they didn't utilize you him. Know how many times they handed? I'd have to double check that again. But I think the first or second game last year, they handed the ball to him six times. True. It was definitely. Oh, un- there was times where un- you were so mad about the whole situation. Like. Where where could he possibly go? Who was the biggest Jonathan loser? Jonathan Taylor. Who was I, the biggest loser out of Zeke signing or preparing to sign with the Patriots and Dalvin Cook going to the? Who was the biggest loser? Who was in the that? biggest loser? Josh in Jacobs. No. Oh. Yes. Team wise. Um. Who was in the hunt for Dalvin Cook? Who was in the hunt for? Who has a, another superstar that's very irritated with the current situation? They'd be happy with getting. I get a position. Wide receiver. Or trading? Yeah, like who you trade for. Wide receiver. I'm drawing a blank here. Buffalo Bills. Ooh. What would a swap for Stefan Diggs for Jonathan Taylor do? Bro. I mean, the Bills still have a deep enough receiving core. They got Gabe Davis. They got Isaiah McKenzie. They still got a fairly good tight end with Dawson Knox. They got a good offensive line. You add in a second depth now. You add in Jonathan Taylor to where you're not one-dimensional and just throw all the time. Well, yeah, but what if they still are one-dimensional? I don't think that they would. I don't. Think, I mean, you don't. You still have a good receiving core, but you don't have that elite receiver. That would open up that passing game so much, and then you still have a workhorse to where 
Josh Allen, you eliminate him getting hit as many times when he takes those runs. Four. You eliminate him having to take those runs as much. And then you set up, like, they really don't run that much play action. They so really don't. The like, you set they... up so much more for him to go out and dot people. Whenever he, and plus, if he doesn't run all the time, that play action gives him. Plus, imagine, him, and be like, Whoa, imagine him playing in the Buffalo snow. Would you want to try to tackle somebody? I don't think running back would want to play fast. in Buffalo snow. I would. You're delivering hits to everybody. It hurts you too. It does, but not as bad as it's going to hurt that defender. And most of them running backs that are in the NFL have that mentality of Marshawn. I'm going to run you, you over have, again and again have, and again. I think it would be a good trade. I don't know. It would be a very interesting but like feasible. I don't know if you'd, you would even have to sneak in draft picks or play, other players. You would probably have to sneak in something. You have to make I, it look pretty salary-wise. I don't know because they both – I mean, I don't know how much your Stephon Diggs has more, but if they did a sign-and-trade with – Jonathan Taylor, it might happen. I feel like Stephon Diggs recently signed an extension. Third, I know is going to be near and dear to you. We're going to go three and four because they're both on the same team. We got Josh Jacobs. We got Hunter Renfro. I personally, I don't think y'all keep both of them. I think Bias it, aside, mm-hmm. I, can, I think I agree. I think the addition of Jacoby Myers, unfortunately, kind of. I think so, too. And I think the emergence of Hunter Renfro Kind of screwed you too, because he's going to demand a higher salary, I think. Okay, but he is he is featured on trade blocks right now. Yeah, he's been. Of course, you know how the teams do. Uh, we're not saying no to. We're we're not fielding any offers, but we're we're still looking at any offers. So just so I, to be honest with you, think Josh Jacobs, uh, or in the Dalvin Cook side, Josh Jacobs was worth more. I think Dalvin Cook. I wholeheartedly agree. I think he kind of took what he could. But I think that's kind of fucked up because Dalvin Cook has been doing it. For- I, think I mean, he, he has the more, more than eight. He should have. But I mean, that's kind of nice though. It's higher than the than the running back salary, time. like average. That's just because a running back is not. A- but I think I think Josh Jacobs will be. A- that being said, Hunter Renfro doesn't go this year, then he might be there forever, and I want that. I hope but- so too. Then the other two that we brought up previously, Trey Lance and Pat Queen. I'm oh, sad. Man. I think I think Pat Queen's gone. Yeah, you. T- where do you think Pat? I mean, honestly, you've seen him for what three years now. This is his third year. Yeah. So you've seen him for two years. Yeah. What's your opinion on him? So the first is when you drafted him. You so had yeah, high he's hopes. Nope. he's on his fifth year right now, and I don't think oh, he's, he's gonna get it. He's year. on his fifth year option. He was a first round draft pick. Beautiful. Took that, but after we got Roquan. First three years, first four years. I mean, first three years he was here. I, I cursed his name. Like yes. I loved him, but like at the, it was a real love hate relationship. But then when Roquan came over, that man switched to another. Game. Like he found out, hey, I can learn a whole lot from this guy. Like, and I'm yeah. sad because we're gonna lose that. He's going. I think he's he's gonna go to the Lions. Goes to Detroit. Ooh. I think he goes to Detroit, and that defense gets a whole lot better. I, yeah, see, Chicago would be another. I think he goes to it. He's going to an NFC team. Those are the two. I agree. Those are my two. I think those are my two sleepers. I think so, too. Chicago, my bad. Chicago and. I'm throwing in the Giants. I'm throwing in I, the Giants. I wouldn't sleep on the Giants either. I think they'll be a good team. I might like, be excited to play them in Madden later. Facts. Facts. Speaking of. We're doing that ARS Madden. We're going to play all 32 games. We're going we're gonna to see. We're going to run our own shit. We're going to have our own prediction video, and then we'll have our alternate who leads the league and everything, whatever, whatever. But make sure you go and tune in on there. We have our own playlist. It's the ARS Alternate Reality Sports. We're going to do all this shit. If you enjoy us just oh, bullshitting okay. and talking, go check that out because we're going to play all the games. Who knows? It might actually be accurate. We'll see after the first couple of weeks because you can make bets off of it. Like, yeah, Stevie beat fucking Grizzly by like 28. We can we can definitely take that bet over. I saw this thing on uh, Bleacher Report. That Smooth. had the top five duos of all time right now. Or not of all time, of current, like right now going into this next year. Okay, so and you have the list in front of you. Yes, let me name off this list for you, and I'm going to ask if you disagree or agree. Okay. So number one, they got Kevin Durant. They got Devin Booker. This is a deadly duo. I'll give it to them. Sure. Two, they got Giannis and Drew Holiday with Milwaukee. 
It's not bad. I think Giannis kind of carries the weight in that. Reach, in my opinion. I think so, too. Reach. At, at two, it's insane. Three, they got Jokic or Murray, which I thought would be higher after winning a ring and breaking all those finals records and shit. Um, four, we got LeBron and AD. Number five, we got Luka and Kyrie. Do you agree or do you disagree with it? Uh, I mean, I, I just... Order of that big time is, is off. I don't think... Holiday and uh, Giannis are. A- I don't believe so. I think Giannis is the top three, five player in the NBA. Without a doubt. But I don't think Drew Holiday is a top 20. I just think he's uh, over that hill. He's uh, definitely I think so a too. He record. does what he does very well, but very he's good. not like, I'm not sitting there like, oh my God, Drew Holiday is. He went off for 40. Yeah, seriously, he doesn't do it. He's a very good facilitator. He's good at what he does. He's good defensively. But I think Giannis kind of carries the star power in there. If we're looking at that list of other point Jamal Murray's kind of, kind of hard to put them in that perfect I don't I don't I don't think so oh, either. I don't I that's I think they're both of the reach the hill, and especially being at number one. The bias. A D can't play a single season or like a full season. LeBron Immediate is over the edge. Like, this point. I know LeBron's still LeBron, but but, yeah, so all right, give me your list. Give me your top five then if you disagree. I, I put Stephen and Clay at my five. I know I know it's been a while, but you a healthy season out of them. They Flash brothers are they are just, you know, lights out always. Will always be lights out. And then I had I had Jason and Jalen at four. I know that's a Okay. It is what it is, but they did take him to the Eastern Conference Finals. So, okay. Um I thought that was a nice little I was surprised that that was not on the list. I was too. Um Number three, I put Bam and Jimmy Butler. Okay. Maybe I have a little bit of bias towards last season, but, you know, obviously what they did, they – Finals, man. Back to the finals. Thanks. And it was with a whole bunch of role players. And I have Katie and Book. Katie and Book's a good one. I, again, might be a little biased here, but I did put Jamal Murray and Jokic at one. You can argue number two and number one, I think. You could probably argue Katie and Booker, but – Matchup is a matchup. Maybe I got the last. Still, but I think so too. You can look at that, and it was in dominating Jamal. fashion that they got healthy beat. Jamal Murray healthy is Jamal a top Murray three is point guard. In the I agree with you. I think he's a top ten player in the top fifteen. I'll put top fifteen player in the NBA. Like, and he might be borderline top ten because, like, the man went through the playoffs and did stretches that only Magic Johnson and like. A few rare people achieved. He did shit Larry Bird couldn't do. He did shit Michael Jordan couldn't do. Like, went and dropped fucking 40. He got the triple-double just along with fucking Jokic. 30-point triple-double. Like, both of them. Like, we got a little bias here I, because we're I, Nuggets dude, fans. But we don't. Watch the finals run. That's the thing. You know? Like, everybody else, the, the finals run was the only Nuggets that they really watched. Nobody's yeah. sitting here watching Nuggets games. Watch the side Nobody games. Nobody knew who Jokic watched. was. Nobody's going to know who Murray is. Watched like, it all. But we, yeah, seriously, since he got drafted from Kentucky, we watched this kid and we watched how much that he's progressed and grown. And like, he really is one of the basketball players. Like, I, I agree with you. I took a I couple of them off. Yeah. I have Yoko Jamuri as number one, too. You can't go against the duo that literally just ran the NBA for the title. I mean, damn near swept the whole fucking final or the whole playoff run. They lost two games, three games. They lost one to Minnesota. They lost two to, uh, the Suns, no in the Los Angeles, and then one to... So they lost four games on a whole fucking title run. Breaking all kinds of records. Wilt Chamberlain's Kareem, like, everything was getting shattered this fucking... Um, number two, I got KD and Booker as well. I mean, they're, they're dominant scorers. They're fantastic, like... Have matchup, the last matchup on your mind? Is, I do yeah, that. I do too, yeah. If you're... And the fact that they did it so dominatingly. There was game, what, game six... KD and Booker did not show up. They were not there. Game five, Booker was not there. And then one of the game, like every other game, one of them was not there. They never fully synchronized. And like you watch Jamal Murray and Jokic, they've been playing together That's since. Years. I That's mean, they've been playing together playing. since 16. Like when they were in the FIBA under like world team and shit. So they've been playing together for so long. Like the pick and roll and everything. Like they know exactly what is going to happen wherever it's going to happen. KD and Booker still have to build that chemistry. Like this is still this is going to be their first full year we actually get to see there's no way that i'm going to put somebody who's been playing together for 10 plus years underneath somebody who's literally going into their first 
Like, I think the chemistry just puts them way above everybody yeah. else. Um, number, th- number three, I put Luka and Kyrie. I think Luka and Kyrie together are an absolutely deadly combo. We didn't get to see a whole bunch of them. That's, that might be why I left them off father. Yeah, because, like, we, it, there was a small sample size. I mean, Kyrie went through his whole shit. They were getting hurt. Like, one of them would be hurt or sit out, and the other one would be playing. Like, we didn't get a whole big sample size. But the sample size that we did see was absolutely phenomenal play. Like, it was... Luka Doncic got elevated to another level, which is even scarier. Like that, yeah, he's already a fucking killer. I think Luka's top five in the NBA. I, 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 I'm inclined to agree with you on that. Somehow, you're so young, yet you've been playing for so goddamn long at such a professional That's, level. Like, and I doubt that. I mean, insane. And then Kyrie's still Kyrie. I how think, old was he when he started playing professional? Maybe over 13. Can you imagine being no. play, playing fucking crazy. video games? Playing NCAA football. Playing against seventh graders. Yeah. Playing against a grown ass no, man. That's the whole that mamba mentality, good. bro. That's that's man. Bonkers. For four, got Jimmy and Bam. But okay, so we I, agree I with have that so one much too. respect for Bam. Oh, yeah, I, I think Bam is Bam's a top I want to say a top three center in the NBA. I think he keeps mm-hmm. developing more and more skills. He's agile. Like as a scorer, he's absolutely phenomenal. He's developing more post moves. The shots getting down. Free throws are good. Like, if he can throw in the three-point shot, which he's been working on, he'll be all around offense, like, just fantastic. Like, his spin move is next level right now. And then defensively, I mean, he's him. It's him. It's him. He buckets. You don't really kind of eat the I mean, explanatory He didn't show up in the finals, but, but I don't blame him. The Nuggets overall were such a better team. I would like to say it's because we're deep, but it's not that we're deep. And then you had KCP had, on you. You had, had Bruce Brown. You had Christian Brown up on you. so like, well. They just played. So well Seriously, together. It's, uh, that was our, our year. It was man, destined to be our year. Like, I can't hold that against Jimmy. Fortunate loss of... And then fifth, I, I agreed with you. I can't believe Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown were not on the list. So I put them at five. I wanted to put them up higher because I think talent-wise, they are better than Jimmy and Bam. But and that, that same result, that Eastern Conference Finals... I mean, he has a different mentality than both of them. Agreed. And I think that kind of is the if factor that put them. What was the team we just? I had Steph and Clay at five. I had Luca and Kyrie. That's you had, what it was. That's what. It was. You had uh, the Splash Brothers. I mean, it's not bad. I I agree with it. I mean, the Splash Brothers are the Splash Brothers. I tried to get it out of him before we filmed. Jason and Jalen was your. Yeah. Get that out. Hey, yeah. No, I I put them yeah, on. Because I was amazed sure. they were not on the top two duos. Hey. Like. I know that they see, and that's the thing that sucks with them, though. They're so good in the regular season; like, they're a phenomenal duo. And then when it comes to the playoffs, and they find a way to choke. They'll choke your ass out. You see him in the the fuck JJ that guy. tournaments or judo fuck tournaments or whatever. I still fuck I don't remember who the fuck got sure. fired, but I'll ride with him. He'll fuck your ass up. I'll bro. ride with the dude who was sleeping with the. Like, Do- Ooh, Doka? Yeah. I don't think he had anything to do with. It. I ride with him. I don't think Joe Missoula had. Anything. I don't think so either. Yeah, for Joe. He's always at the UFC fights and shit. Uh, yeah, I, I saw him in like... He's a martial artist. He likes to fight. For the- Guess what? His team doesn't. There he does. Head it in. Speaking of the MMA, we saw him MMA. at 292. It was out in Boston. So there. we did see him out there. Were you surprised at all? You know... About the outcomes. Like fights, the fighters are. Because I know win. them. And she doesn't know them. I'm like, hey, babe, who's going to... Sean O'Malley. I sat there and said, you know, I can see it, but I think Alderman's going to go out there and just dominate him on the ground and on... Now, we watched that fight got to the point where Mason had to go to sleep. I had to watch it on my phone. I had to be real quiet about it. But as soon as I saw that right yeah, mind blown to say the least. Do it in that fucking fashion. Hit him with that perfect counter, and then to see him and his coach training that during training camp, and then ask all uh, behind behind. Don O'Malley's a star, man. Yeah. He is a yeah. Conor McGregor level star now. At that point, I've heard conspiracies that it was rigged. Oh. Aljamain Sterling was the most hated UFC champion. It's undeniable. <laughs> Nobody thought he actually deserved the belt. Don O'Malley fought 12 fighters. 11 of them are no longer in the UFC. 
Like he fought absolutely nobody. He's got the title shot. Uh, Pedro Munoz they... and Cheeto Vera are still both. Okay, so he fought what? Thirteen people. Eleven of them are not in the UFC. I think he's fought. Then I, I know not. not in... I know a good percentage of the fighters that he Pure, fought. He fought Pure and he fought three. That okay. definitely. But he lost that Pure de Jong fight. Yeah, I I am inclined to agree. That. He lost that. Fight. I've heard. I mean, and he's Dana's boy. He is like you said. He's got Connor. He's he said he's going to be bigger than Connor. I think yeah. he's bigger than Connor. Yep. How much but, of a push do you think it was to get him to be that champ? I it might have been a push to get him in fight, but that fight he definitely he clipped him. Maybe you could See, argue no, like and an I agree with that. But why? Yeah, why did they stop it so early after watching everything that Amanda Lee most? Went? I don't agree with that. Unfortunately, yeah, he was. This is the thing. Zhang Weili was she had on her on her. So okay, she's not, she's not generating that much. Let me ask you. Don O'Malley standing up and first round. No, wow. first round. But even then, as soon as he got over it, he was intelligently defending. You look at Amanda Lemos. There were times in the first round for like a good minute that Wei Lee had her against the cage with her arm up and was just fucking hammering into her face. They could have easily called that in the first round. I was arguing a stop for that. I think, yeah, me but too. I, but like, I think, I think if you're going to let that run out, you can't be like, oh no, the next fight we're going to call it immediately. Like, Aljo would have taken way more damage. I think, than hey, Lemos. if you're fighting for a belt, that's how it should be. Like, I, you, I, I'm not getting bailed out. If I personally have my own, like, if I'm the UFC championship, like, if I'm the UFC champion, I'm not going to allow you to fuck me up. Like, like I, I, I put my I, ass out. I'm either tapping or you're going to knock me the fuck out. And I think that's going to be your argument when you... Just, it, it could have gotten ugly. It would have gotten just as it could have uglier, but I don't, I don't think Aljo would have improved much. He might have. He might have, and you could always say he... Because this is the thing. I mean, O'Malley would have had to come up, throw another shot. What if he rolls into it, takes down the legs? He was not present enough to know. We don't know about that. He getting... we don't know. We don't know. That's why he didn't... Just... Which is true. And said, hey. Which is true. But to that point, too, I mean, shit, he could have been paid off and been cool with it. No. I could see it. Uh, Dana Aljo White is a crooked so... man. He runs business Aljo crooked as fuck. was so close to being... Best. He's arguably the best I don't think he of is. his heat. Who? Dominic Cruz? Oh, of his weight class? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So I, when you're at that point, you don't. You're not. You're. It doesn't. No. You're. You want to be the best. You want to be the very best. So I don't think. I don't think he got. It was just. Okay. It was Sean O'Malley. Do you think he gets a rematch, or do you think he goes to Cheeto Vera, or do you think he goes to uh, yeah. Marab? We're gonna talk about this. I, I just said. Deep. Privilege. I see him fighting Cheeto because he didn't take too much like, damage. He, did yeah. he didn't take too much damage. And when, when he calls a fight like that and then watch him get a. F it'll be some shit. He'll be at that level. Then he'll fight Aljo. Way too early. I think that he has a chance again. So, I'd have to watch that fight over again for maybe the third time, but like. from good leg kicks yeah it was the one that she so what it was is he landed one and the toe went into the nerve shut down yeah, his leg that's what i thought and then he shut him down yeah, and then, then he, he couldn't move and then he beat the, the shit out, out of him got okay. him to the ground beat the shit so out. if chido just sticks to that game plan think john has a i think and sean cheeto um, i love cheeto last fights i think he fought cory sandhagen mm. he lost to cory it's a good fight though yeah but cory cory is great Cheeto is slow in the very beginning of every fight, and you cannot you, so not, you cannot do that slow. against Sean O'Malley. It I is. know that that leg kick damage. I feel like Sean O'Malley's in, I with feel that like energy he, like, has something to he prove. He's got one loss on his record. He wants to get that blemish. But I don't so, think I see, and I think that Cheeto is going to take that someone. like personally too. Sure, because every was time, time that he sits there and throws the zeros, yeah. Like I could see it, and I think. Cheeto is not a better boxer, but I think he has the boxing skills to stand up with O'Malley. I think he's got the better ground game for sure. Yeah. I think on it, it, it all depends. I mean, honestly, I don't know. I O'Malley's see, got that if factor. He can hit so hard. I want to hard. see more of his ground game. I know that he stopped to take for Aljo. Yeah. And I know he practiced. He said he practiced a lot of takedown, uh, wrestling defense, 
during the training camp leading up into it. Like, I want to see more wrestling. I so, do too. I want to see what he can do on I'm the not, ground. I, I don't want to say maybe. Maybe he doesn't get Sean to the ground. Maybe Sean literally is that Justin Gaethje style which where he's so dope. good I mean, at wrestling, he, can, he just keeps you on the feet because he just... Which would be... Inc- which, if he improved like that because all he had was the hands... And no one can strike with Sean. No. I think, I think we're looking at a Max Holloway-level striker. I think so, too. When it comes to... Because the greatest striker of all time in the UFC can argue all you want Max sitting Holloway. here saying Max Holloway the whole goddamn Max time. Holloway. Land, Max what, Holloway. 800 punches in a row, 600 and something punches in a so, fight. I'm, again, I'm watching the fight. My girl, we're watching uh, John Whaley versus Amanda Lemos, and he telling her the fight, fight punch totals afterwards. Like, oh my God, that's a lot. I'm like, yeah, you want to hear a crazy stat? I'm pretty sure Max Holloway punched for like less in a fight. So, like, not even that much. But what was it? It was like 320 something. Yeah, to, and I think he threw. No, I'm talking. Oh, Wait, Amanda Lee. Lemos. I would have to check like again. 330 to like 27 or It was some like shit. 28. It was like 130 to like. I'd have to pull that up. Is again. that significant that strikes? That was sick. Yeah, I think it's like 133 to 20 something, like 23 sick or something. Strikes, yeah. Which is fucking insane. Like, she got pieced up. You know, I know we're on the UFC and. Seven, but I want to sneak in. Did you... I think I mentioned it to you. Michigan self-imposed a, a good old Jim Harbaugh ban yeah, for three games. they doing was wrong. They said, yeah, they didn't have the evidence, but we knew what you were doing. Thoughts on that, yeah. He's... I think it's cool. It's a class act by Michigan. They knew that they weren't going to get through the loopholes. I'm not going to say that because fuck them. No, I mean, John Harbaugh, or not John, uh, Jim. Jim tried to get around the system. He knew what he was doing. They fell apart. They're owning up to their mistake. I like that. That's a class act. They could have easily been like, oh, yeah, no, sweep that all under the rug. But they wanted most, to jump most ahead universities and save, would, but a save face. I they think. did, but hey, they did it. Okay, so, six, so total strikes was 300 or 296 to 29. Six strikes was 163 to 24. That's a mandalay motion. My John Whaley for you. And then that being said, like, who's going to. Who, Nobody. That's hers. Nobody. That's hers. That's that's you run He's, that. Shit. But I don't know. We said the same thing about uh. Valentina. Yeah, she got hers back though, didn't she? Oh, she. I think she avenges her belt next month. Or the- uh, I, I think it's again. coming. But you yeah, don't I, see her I said I could see that coming. Yeah. I'm scared. The people, your good old beautiful jersey. Yeah. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it, people. That's the good old Kale McCarr for you. I don't know if you heard the news, but my man is going to be gracing the cover of NHL. Um, big time. I don't think any Avalanche player has ever done that. I know and NHL 98 on the Super Nintendo. There's an Avalanche player, but I don't know if it's like Joe Sackick or if it's somebody. It's kind of a more generic thing. Yeah. I don't know if they were playing for likeness back then. But Kel McCarr, shout out to you. Kobe, I saw the other, if we're staying on 2K coverage, release information. Kobe coming out again. Um, going to grace the cover of 2K. How do you feel about that? Now, we did pull something up that said six times he's been on there. Them are the same Thank game, you. but just like the like standard versus standard deluxe. Version. Um, I think Kobe's the GOAT. Uh, I'll never be mad at Kobe being on anything. I got a picture of him in my house. Yep. So, um... Yeah, I'll never be mad at Kobe being. I did see on that same guy had been on the cover for what? 2K, 2K1, 2K2, 2K2, 2K3, 2K4. Wow. Then just kept running. And as soon as 2K dropped, Allen Iverson was it. Hey, look, we're so, big AI fans. This. The only reason that I was a little bit upset with it, I wanted Jokic. Yeah. I mean, you're going to win your championship. It, it would, had a cold setup that they could have done, like done like a frost one or like. Done like yeah, a mountain, mountain or, one. They, but, they had such a cool setup on let that. Them, let them do that for the next and year. And this with Kobe. Hopefully the Nuggets repeat. That's then, what I'm saying. Watch us we'll repeat. Um, watch us just have Jokic just be, talk about the fame. I'm saying. Whenever we get two or three. What if they offered it to him and he was like, no, I, I don't want to be on the cover of 2K. I don't want it to give it to Kobe. <laughs> I mean, I could see it. He's a fucking class act. I would say, can my horse be on the cover? Max, you probably would. Can I, can I bring my horse trophy? No. NBA. But, you know, I do like the ones where they do cool 
it would have just done like the first time as it would have been so dope you know, like and it would have been one i would have bought the hard copy i would have had to copies i want to say remember uh, 11 with San Antonio Holmes and Troy. Larry Fitzgerald, Larry Fitzgerald and Troy Fitzgerald Palmer. And Troy Palmer. Yeah. yeah, that was the first one they ever did duel. I mean, and then they came out, 2K started doing it because then they came out with Bird, Magic, and uh, Jordan. Uh, Steph Curry, and then I don't remember who. I've been Giannis. Oh, this is a little bit older before Giannis is. Yes. Oh, I do remember now. No, 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 I do remember. I can't remember who the other one. I don't remember. Yeah, there that were is, three different players. On, so that is true. We'll be playing those on that uh, ARS series we were talking about earlier. Sure. Make sure you subscribe to that shit. Uh, Madden episodes are gonna be coming real soon. Season off in a couple weeks. We we'll have uh, episodes about fantasy coming up here soon. Cause we got that whole league coming, so make sure you tune in for that. Hit the like, subscribe, comment, the bell. Do all the good shit. Tell your mom. Tell your friends. Tell your grandma. Sign up 48 different YouTube accounts and subscribe to us. We appreciate you. We love you. Peace.